Dating has gone mainstream, maybe an understatement. Nearly one in three Americans have gone online to find a partner. Yeah, Utah woman thought that she found love through a dating site. She did not. And as KSL investigator Matt Gephardt explains, what she did for love could land her in jail. Matt? Yeah, Mike Dini, if you find yourself the victim of a scam, there's a few things you can probably expect, right? You can expect to lose a little bit of money. Maybe you would expect to lose a little bit of pride. How about losing your freedom? Tonight, the story of a woman who found herself jailed for love. Christina Ott thought she had found the man of her dreams on a dating website. She was recently divorced, and she loved what she was hearing from him. You start opening up yourself to somebody and allowing somebody else's life into yours. While never meeting in person exactly. through constant emails, yeah, text messages, and like, phone calls. You fell in love? Christina says she fell in, fell in love. love. He said he was too. But you, I mean, really. You, I was. You, you I felt was. in love. Absolutely. Which, you know, I never believed that that could happen, right? And after a while, the two began talking about their future. The man told Christina that he wanted to start a business. It's my retirement. I live in Utah. Let's open a restaurant in downtown Salt Lake. I'm like, that's great. From here, that relationship became much more financial. So I've saved everything because, like I said... Christina says her online love claimed that he had investors lined up. So she opened some bank accounts and began taking deposits. And she says at his direction, she wired money to pay for things like a building and restaurant equipment. Or so she thought. Oh, we had to write a check to open the account. Christina showed us the huge amount of checks and wires that passed through her accounts. Three or four thousand dollars here, fourteen thousand dollars there. Some amounts as high as fifty grand, totaling up to... Maybe a million. You had a million dollars go through your bank account? I think, yeah. But Christina says their partnership, both financial and romantic, dissolved quickly when she expressed frustration. And I said, look, I've waited long enough for you to be in town. I get COVID and all of that, but you need to be here. I'm not sending anything else out until you're here with me. Here, he falls silent. It's also where Christina says she realized that she had been duped. Months later, she was visiting her nephew on a military base for Christmas and trying to clear security. The police were called, and she was taken away in cuffs. In front of my kids, my grandchild. Christina spent three nights in jail before she was able to bail out. Authorities arrested her on a warrant out of Powell County, Kentucky. The KSL investigators reached out to Kentucky prosecutors to ask about all of this. They have not yet returned our calls, but through court records, we were able to see that the charges are serious. Christina faces a felony charge of theft by unlawful taking. Prosecutors in Kentucky are accusing her of taking more than $46,000 from a bank. If convicted, Christina could spend five to 10 years behind bars and have to pay $92,500 back. And even if Christina didn't know what she was doing, the charges could stick, says FBI Special Agent Drew Scown. If there's enough warning signs there that a reasonable person should have you know, figured out, hey, something is not right here, then, then absolutely that person could be on the hook for, uh, for laundering that money. And Scown could not get into the specifics of Christina's case, but he tells me she is far from alone getting duped by a lying lover. Well, over 23,000 Americans lost more than $600 million to romance scammers and con artists in 2020. That includes 296 Utahns who lost more than $6 million. Scown says many romance scammers will trick their victims into not necessarily sending their own money, but rather acting like a money mule. And they're basically used by these criminal organizations to move funds from one place to another to both hide the, who the criminal organization is and also to make it harder for law enforcement to trace those illegal funds. I'm waiting, waiting for the other shoe to drop. As for Christina, she insists that she thought she was opening a restaurant with a man whom she loved. She's embarrassed and she's scared. I don't want it to happen to anybody. It's totally destroying my life and my future. 
All right, some late developments on this one. While we still have not heard back from Kentucky prosecutors, Christina says she has. They're offering her a plea deal. They will drop the felony charges, they will say no jail time, and they will let her off with a misdemeanor. Uh, she has to plead guilty to a misdemeanor and pay back $5,000. Christina says that's a deal she's probably going to take, and Dini, she hopes others learn from this incredibly traumatic for her story. Yeah, to be, to be set up on so many levels that way, that's a tough lesson. Matt, thank you.